on this episode. Right, let's see. Whoa, that's insane. A confronting case for Scott when he meets a tiny kitten with a shocking birth defect. Oh my gosh. Oh. A challenge for Audrey as she tries to treat injured Grudel Zeus. Can we have a look? Oh! Oh, I know, I know, it's so... Oh. Oh. I'm suspecting she's got underlying allergies and then secondary infections that just haven't been well managed. Will Danny be able to save rescue staffy Katie? You're a very brave girl, hey? It's <laughs> so beautiful. And it's not every day one of our vets gets to treat a baboon. We have to be cautious to make sure that no keepers and myself get scratched or bitten. They could grab your hand, pull your finger through and bite your finger off. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. In Isleworth, a nervous TJ has come to Scott after discovering a deformity in her 12-week-old kitten's chest. You're tired now, aren't you? The local family were, were getting rid of kittens and oh, I just saw his face and just, just lost it. He was just something special. I was just in love with him straight away. Hi, TJ. Hey, how's it going? <gasps> I'm good. Oh my goodness, this is the chap. This is Foxy. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful boy you are. I can see where he got the name. Yeah, the massive ears. I can see where you're already in love. He's only been three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He's just bags of personality. He will climb up you, curl himself in a ball under my chin and just purr like a Harley Davidson. Foxy, up, up. When TJ first picked up the tiny kitten, her heart sank. I could feel straight away that his chest curved inward and it was very odd. Foxy. She immediately set up a consultation with Scott. All right, let's take this little chap in the consult room, shall we? Come on, Daniel. TJ and I both work together on a TV show here in the UK and with our love of animals, we've become friends. The main concern you've got is underneath this jacket, isn't it? Yes. Right, let's see. Feel that chest. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, that's insane, isn't it? Quite disconcerting. Oh, that, I can get up to my finger, like that. There's knuckle, yeah. Oh my gosh. In Sydney, Audrey is making a house call to check on young Grudel, Zeus. Hi, Dr. Audrey. Thanks. Zeus's owner, Danielle, is concerned her adventurous puppy has done something serious to his paw. Hi, Danielle. Oh, oh Zeus. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> What's happened? Oh, he jumped off the couch and he screamed and, um, yeah, we're just really worried that he's really badly hurt himself. Yeah, is he putting any weight on it at all? No, when you put him down, he, like, he screams and he hops, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see he's really licking it there, really guarding it. All right, Zussie, can we have a look? <coughs> oh, come on, buddy. <coughs> oh, I know, I know, it's so... Oh, oh dear. Well, he's really protective of that foot, yeah. which tells me it's really sore. Yeah. We might have to just pop his head away so that I can have a good look and I might shave it up just to see there's no open wounds. Okay. But just hanging there, it doesn't look like it's in a really good position. I'm okay. worried there's a break there of some sort. Okay, all right. All right, let Thank me just you. grab a towel and we'll see if we can give that a go. Hey, it's really sore, isn't it? Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, don't bite, mummy. <laughs> yes, no. it's all right. I'm worried because a break in a puppy's paw could be quite serious. If it's across a growth plate, that might affect his growth, or if it's shattered into a million pieces, then we may not be able to save the paw and we may be risking infection. Oh. Oh. We're guarding it, aren't we? It's very painful. Oh. That 
That's insane, isn't it's quite it? Quite disconcerting. Oh, look at that. I can get up to my finger like that. First knuckle, yeah. In the UK, Scott has just discovered an unusual cavity in the chest of little 12-week-old kitten Fox. Oh my gosh. Fox is already suffering as a result of his congenital abnormality. He struggles to breathe sometimes, he's quite breathless. He has something called pectus excavantums. In humans, it's, it's like an inward pointing sternum or breastbone. So yeah. I think it used to be called pigeon chest. Yeah. So rather than your sternum, your breastplate slightly going out, his is going way in. So that reduces the size of his chest cavity. And as they grow, their heart and their lungs don't have anywhere to mature into. Unfortunately, with this condition, the kitten won't live naturally longer than 12 months. It's always tough when you tell an owner that they're beloved animal might not survive and unfortunately with this condition Fox just won't be able to develop into a normal adult cat. The surgery that we need to do is basically to encourage that yet to be fully stiff breastplate, the sternum, and we have to pull it out. The risks of that though are heavy. I have to put a number of needles into his chest and inside the chest cavity, will not shock you, is full of really, really important things. Yeah. If we nick any of those, he won't make it through the surgery. And even if I don't, the opening of the chest cavity to a normal size can also lead to them stop breathing. I'm quite anxious now, but I don't know, it's best to have honesty, I think, because, you know, he, he could lose his life, but if he doesn't have the surgery, he could also lose his life, so. It's a lot to take on, and I appreciate how much you love him already and how hard that must be. TJ must now make a tough decision. <sighs> yep. Come on, buddy. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, it's so... Oh. In Sydney, Audrey is trying to get a good look at Zeus's injured paw after the young Groodle jumped awkwardly off a couch. Oh! But Zeus isn't too keen on an examination of his painful paw. Alrighty, we've got some reinforcement. If you can just lift him for a second. We've got to make you forget about that for a little bit, don't we? I know, it's sore. It's... Can Auntie Audrey have a look at it? Okay, good boy, good boy. So I'm just going to have the feel of it. It looks very sore. And I'm just going to shave a bit of hair to make sure there's no open wounds yeah. or anything that might be causing the pain. Oh, oops, he's out. Hello. Oh. Oh, boy. Being brave. Good boy, Zeus. So good news is there's no open wounds, but he's definitely hanging that wrist in a very unusual angle. Okay. And there's a bit of swelling just on the inside as well. Yep. So I'm worried he's got a break in one of his little bones in his wrist. Okay. All right, so best thing is we take him to the hospital, okay. do some x-rays of his paw, and then depending on what we find, I'll give you a call. Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you. But it is very sore, so I'll give him some pain relief as well. Glad that Audrey's taken Zeus away. We're just really worried about him and want him better and fixed. Say bye, Mummy. An x-ray will give Audrey a clear picture of just how badly Zeus injured his paw. You've been such a good boy. Vet nurse Iona will be assisting. Hi Iona. Hi. This is little Zeus. Hi. The plan is to get him into this cradle position, rock him gently to sleep, place him on the table and hopefully get that paw in position that I can take a good x-ray. So left paw in an AP view. Good boy. That's a good boy, oh I know. Despite the pain, Zeus is remarkably relaxed, but he still needs to be manoeuvred into exactly the right position and kept still enough for an X-ray. We've got Zeus into position, we're slowly cradling him and rocking him to sleep on the x-ray table and hopefully I can get that paw in the perfect position to take an x-ray.
We managed to get an x-ray of that paw and I'm really, really hoping that we haven't got a nasty fracture there, no signs of infection, or that there's many, many little fractured bones that we can't repair, can't splint, and maybe we'd have to look at amputating the leg. Wow. Whoa. Look at that. Wow, that's pretty bad. Mm, buddy, that's gonna hurt. Mm. At Melbourne's Lost Dogs Home, Danny is ready for her first patient. Kara Annette is also starting work. I love taking care of the dogs at the shelter. It's one of my favourite things to do. Oh my gosh, yeah. So happy to see you. Today, Danny will be checking rescue staffy Katie, who's suffering chronic ear problems. We're gonna go to the vet today. Katie is one of my favourites at the shelter. She's just so calm when she wants to be and also like such a diva. She's everything you want in a dog, really. <laughs> you want to see Dr. Danny? Huh? Yes, we are. Hi, Annette, how are Hi. you? Good, how are you? Good. Hello, Katie girl. Do you want to come on Yeah, soon? of course, love to. Katie is very lovingly known as Katie the Happy Staffy by all the staff here. <laughs> She loves to wag her tail, she's so wiggly. <laughs> it's really heartbreaking to think that she was on the street and didn't know what human touch and companionship was. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it's really nice to sort of see her come out of her shell. All right, darling, let's have a look and see how these ears are going, hey? Let's just have a little look here, hey? Yeah, okay, yeah. A bit sore, hey, mom? Yeah, darling. Even a mild ear infection is going to be itchy and painful. So thinking of Katie who has this long-term, ongoing pain is just so upsetting to me. There's actually inflammation just in that external part of the ear. And she's clearly upset by me trying to touch them, which mm. I'll try and be very hands-off. Seeing her response was a really big alarm bell that these ears could be actually a lot worse than what was expected and we might be in a really bad way. Let's just oh. have a look in there, yeah. Yeah, so that one's quite inflamed still. Mm. You can see there's inflammation there. Yeah. Hey, I know, okay. Unless Katie can get a clean bill of health, she won't be available for adoption and find a loving new home. I'm sort of losing hope that we're going to be able to manage this medically. Poor Baba. The opening of the chest cavity to a normal size can also lead to them stop breathing. You really, unfortunately, don't have much of a choice. In Isleworth, TJ must decide whether to proceed with high-risk surgery to correct her 12-week-old kitten's life-threatening birth defect. If left and untreated, sadly, it will lead to his premature death. I really love him so much, but... And he's so full of life, you know, I really want him to have a good life. Courageous TJ decides to go ahead with the perilous procedure to try to mend Fox's deformed chest bone. And even greater pressure for me is that actually today is my 25th anniversary of being a vet. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Well, I'm, I'm hopefully that's good luck for him. I really, really hope it is. It's been a great career. It's been what I dreamed of doing ever since I was seven. And today, being that I'm performing a surgery that I've never performed before on a friend of mine's kitten, there's some pressure there, but I think the experience that I've developed over those 25 years is gonna count for a lot. All right, say goodbye to mummy. Bye, baby. Be good. I'll look after him, I promise. I'll get you back to mummy very, very soon. See ya. Saying goodbye is always difficult, but not knowing whether I'll see him alive again is even worse. Before operating, Scott x-rays Fox's chest to see the extent of the malformation in the tiny kitten's breastbone. X-ray. Quite an astonishing x-ray. So you can see here, this is his breastbone, his sternum, and that should just go straight down like that. And you can see it's going, whoa, like that. 
it's just so abnormal. It's curving right inwards, almost like a, you know, witch's deformed finger or something. Because of the high risks involved in the surgery, Scott has chosen experienced nurses Gina and Jason to assist. I can't downplay the concerns regarding this procedure because basically what I have to do is put a needle inside his chest cavity multiple times. I could puncture the heart, I can puncture the lungs, so we can either get internal bleeding and he'll die on the table, we'll get a punctured lung and he'll die on the table. And then also when we open up the chest, because it's all of a sudden got this huge amount more volume than it did before, we probably will see some issues with the anaesthetics. Can you come back to us, okay? Yep. Doctor's orders. Okay, let's do this. Here we go, kids. Get up here. Everybody get some. On the outskirts of Sydney, the newest member of the Bondi Vet team is catching up with some hungry friends. Oh God, I've got none left. No, no. As a veterinarian, it's more than just a job. It's a very big part of your life. <laughs> it's so beautiful. In a career spanning 50 years, Rob has treated every kind of animal from cats and dogs to more exotic creatures, like those found here at Zambi Wildlife Retreat. Come on, there you go. Zambi exists as a retirement home for animals. A lot of them come from zoos as well as circuses. They come here and have a forever home. We look after them and give them a really pleasant five years of life. Hey Jess. How you going Rob? Good, Gee, they look good in the new house, don't they? Yeah. Today, Rob and Zambi team leader Jess will be giving contraceptives to two baboons to prevent an unwanted pregnancy in their twilight years. What are the girls' names? Uh, Pinky, she's the oldest, yeah. and then Flash is the younger female. Watch out for her friend. First up is Flash, who's been sedated so she can be moved safely to the operating theatre. Okay, ready to go? Mm -hmm. You have to be cautious to make sure that no keepers and myself get scratched or bitten. They could grab your hand, pull your finger through and bite your finger off. That's how aggressive they can be. And baboons could harbour diseases like HIV and hepatitis, and they're often transferable to humans. So we're careful. So we'll take the old rod out, contraceptive rod out, and let's yep. make sure it's worked. This is a human implant, and we put it under the skin, and it releases hormones very slowly and stops them from having babies over the next, hopefully, 12 months. There you go. Ada, if you keep watching her heart rate before me. She's certainly going to need some gas. Seven-year-old Flash will be under anaesthetic while the contraceptive is inserted and Rob is worried about the risks. The most nerve-wracking thing for me is making sure the animal lives through the procedure when you anaesthetise them. You know, I've got their lives in my hand and I'm sweating. Overdose them because they're only little guys and you could kill them. Ed, if you just keep them on the tuning for me. Okay, let's do this. In the UK, Scott is operating to try to correct a severe birth defect in 12-week-old kitten Fox's chest. So we've got one in now. I am blindly placing a needle into the chest cavity. At any moment, I could perforate his heart. He could bleed out within seconds. So I'll be starting up this end and then slowly as we go, we'll be lifting and tying the sutures. And by doing so, it'll allow me to lift up the sternum. So kind of if you have a log and you put rope underneath the log all the way along, well then you can lift the log up. Once the sutures are in place, Scott will attach them to a custom made breastplate that will hopefully stimulate Fox's chest bone to grow outwards instead of in. But first he has to insert delicate stitches 
without inflicting a fatal injury on his tiny patient. They'll start getting a bit easier now, won't they? No, they're no. actually getting harder. Oh. At the Lost Dogs home in Melbourne, Danny is trying to get a close-up look at rescue staffy Katie's extremely painful ears. Okay, so there is a lot of waxy discharge still in that ear, some inflammation going on, hey? Kara Annette is desperately hoping that with the right treatment, this lovable girl whose staff have nicknamed the Happy Staffy can soon be well enough for adoption. You cope very well with that, you're a very brave girl, hey? It's obvious that she's had chronic long-term ear problems, she's got thickened skin, there's that real like cobblestone appearance as well. Ear infections are incredibly common in dogs and really underestimated how much they impact their well-being. It causes irreversible damage to the ear canal that can end up in a situation when you're having extreme surgery. So you can just see at the back of that ear there. She's clearly been scratching there, it's really inflamed and there's a bit of hair loss. Danny's become increasingly worried about the state of Katie's ears, but she's desperately hoping she can avoid invasive surgery involving completely removing what's left of the severely damaged ear canals. Even just feeling the rest of her skin, like she's got that seborrhea, yeah. that really greasy coat. Let's have a little look under your paws or your hair, darling. It's quite inflamed. So that's not a healthy paw. Oh goodness, that was so painful. I'm suspecting she's got underlying allergies and then secondary infections that just haven't been well managed. Yeah. So we're gonna to have to pop her under another anaesthetic today, see what's going on as to why this infection isn't resolving. This ear infection is the one thing at the moment that is actually preventing her moving along her pathway to finding that family. There's a lot riding on those ears being okay today. I'll keep you posted with how she goes yeah, today, okay? Please. I will. Oh, look there. Oh, wow. Hey, buddy. In Sydney, Audrey and vet nurse Iona have just x-rayed puppy Zeus's paw to assess the damage after he jumped awkwardly off a couch. Two big clean breaks across his metacarpals, but everything else looks okay. I was really worried he had a few fractures, like completely shattered there, but actually if you were gonna get a break, that's a pretty good one to get. It means that we can splint it and you've missed all your growth plates. Lucky. Very lucky duck. Okay, so plan is we will splint it. You ready for that? It's gonna be a long journey. Whenever I do a splint, I wanna make sure that it's nice and firm and it's actually protecting the area that's unstable. Just pop these between your toes. But it also prevents him from moving those bones too much so they can heal properly. All right, so I made a splint. It's going across his wrist and a little bit higher up, just so he can't move that wrist at all. And we want to kind of get him to use this like a walking stick while that bone heals. Very good. Not a good boy. Okay, looks a bit overkill, but we kind of need it so you can't bend your foot. Oh, big yawns. Yes, you know we're done. There you go. Take it for a test run. So splints on, bandages on. I really want to see how he goes walking on the ground. So we're going to take him for a test drive on the grass. Oh, okay. come on. Okay, slow down. Good boy. Oh, okay, slow down. Come on, come on in. Yeah. Zeus seems to be walking on the splint really well. He's happy, he seems comfortable. The pain relief is working. So happy to send him home. Check in on the bandage every two or three days. He's got to keep that on for six weeks. So if he's a good boy, those bones should heal perfectly. And I'm sure he's going to make a great recovery. Prognosis is good. Let's go, 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 let's go. There's the old one. Take the old one out, put a new one in. At Sydney's Zambi Wildlife Retreat, Rob is about to implant a contraceptive rod into female baboon Flash. Pulse is good. The seven-year-old is under a general anaesthetic and Rob doesn't want to keep her asleep any longer than necessary. 
I don't like to keep them out too long at all. It's just too dangerous. You've got the worry about breathing, is the heart rate okay, your blood pressure all right? It's their life, and I want to make sure it's a happy one for as long as possible here. Okay. Very good. Let's do it. Zambi team leader Jess keeps a close eye on the sanctuary's retired baboons, who came here after spending most of their lives at a zoo or in the circus. I do have quite a bond with these baboons. We put contraception in these guys yearly because we don't want them to get pregnant. We don't breed here, so we do everything that we can to prevent that. Just to see if you can tease it out. I'll keep working on this end for you. Beautiful. That's it. We've got him out. With the old contraceptive extracted, Rob works quickly to insert the new one. It's a human one. It's used extensively in the medical field, but too big for her. So we will halve it and pop it in. Yep, it's going to fit nicely. Flash's slow-release contraceptive is safely in place. So we will suture it in like we've always done. But the team faces a major challenge making sure it stays there. We've stitched the actual area where the rod's gone in, but these animals will pick them out, especially baboons. She could pull it all out and all this is for nothing. They'll start getting a bit easier now, won't they? They're no? actually getting harder. Oh. Right, okay, next one. In Isleworth, Scott is cautiously inserting stitches into Fox's chest, dangerously close to the little kitten's heart and lungs. Putting sutures in a chest cavity on a 12-week-old kitten obviously is risky. The margin of error is so, so small. So yeah, that's, that's good. Now we're getting somewhere. Look at that, that looks great. I know that he's past the point of danger and I know I can correct the deficit that, that nature dealt him. We're going to put some padding in place. I'm going to trim it a little bit. With the most perilous part of the surgery over, Scott now attaches a temporary breastplate to Fox's chest. Right, so that's our suit of armour on and uh, hopefully a nice straight sternum underneath. The plan is that it will remain there for up to three weeks. And what that will do is encourage the sternum to lay out and it'll start to ossify, so it'll start to harden up. And then when we remove the plate, the breast should stay in position. And that'll then mean that this little guy will live a full and natural life. X-ray. Great. Yeah, so you can see that. Before it's sort of almost like an S-bend of a toilet, and now it's much straighter. So the chest has got all this extra space, and so now as long as I've got to use. While little Fox recovers from his life and death surgery, his owner TJ arrives, desperate to be reunited with the much loved kitten she feared she might never see again. There he is! Oh, look at your little outfit! Hey, yeah. baby! Yeah, so he's still very sleepy. Underneath here, there's a breastplate. He's going to feel like he's wearing a straight jacket, so he's not going to think that's brilliant, but very quickly he will get used to it. I'm hoping over the days and weeks, what we'll see is he'll start breathing into this new chest cavity. Oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's wonderful you put the faith in me, and after 25 years, I still got it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really good. So I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I'm so glad for you, and he is just a dream. I couldn't think of anything better than on my 25th anniversary as a vet to be able to perform a surgery like that. To be able to give Fox the chance at a full and natural life that he wouldn't have had. Very satisfying and I'm, yeah, very proud, 25 years. And as you know, they love to pick out the suture and pick out the implant. In Sydney, Rob has just inserted a contraceptive in seven-year-old Flash. Cute. But he's worried the inquisitive baboon will dig it out, putting her at risk of an unwanted pregnancy. Now, a couple of little tricks. We will make sure that we put some 
extra stitches. Extra sutures in different places. We've stitched where the rod's gone in, but now we're going to put some decoy sutures in. The decoys are because these animals will pick them out. If we have enough decoys and just put local anaesthetic in the ones that we want to keep in, she may leave that in long enough for everything to heal and leave the rod in. With this one, we hope by the time they pick it out, it'll be adhesed in and hopefully after 10 days, the skin will have healed and we'll be laughing, we hope. And one more after this, just and hopefully that'll keep them interested in these rather than the ones that have to heal. Shot of antibiotics and we're ready to go back. Okay, all done. There you go, little darling. No babies for you. That's it for Flash. Pinky next. Let's turn around the aesthetic off. I'm so relieved when they finally wake up and walk around and think, okay, that's okay, another one. Which way we go? Depends on, on the same arm. Next to receive a contraceptive rod is 20-year-old Pinky. Can't see it on this arm. She might have that. pulled it out. Looks like she has. If Pinky has removed her birth control palate, an unplanned pregnancy could put the ageing baboon's life at risk. Just pop on the side. Pinky is the older animal, and we don't want these older animals being exposed to that sort of health risk of having babies at this age. She could die. Hi TJ. Morning. How are you? I'm good. Hello, my gorgeous little football. How are you? It's three weeks since little kitten Fox's life-saving surgery, and TJ has brought him back to Scott. It's time to have his breastplate removed and to see if his chest is now developing normally. How's that? Does that feel better? All right. Well, everything's sounding really good. The deficit's definitely reduced. Yeah. Good boy. He's got a lot bigger chest cavity than he did before. Now we've removed the breastplate, I'm really happy with the way Fox is looking. He is breathing far bigger, deeper breaths, and I'm incredibly hopeful that this little cat and TJ can live a long and loving life together. All right, buddy. See you later, breathe well. <laughs> See you later, TJ. Take care. Bye. Bye. It's definitely been a massive relief to know that you give them the best chance to grow up to be a big fluffy ginger cat rather than just a little one. So I can just see at the back of that ear there that she's clearly been scratching there, it's really inflamed. In Melbourne, Danny is desperately hoping she can help friendly staffy Katie, a rescue dog with skin allergies and chronic and debilitating ear infections. All right, sweetie, can you go to sleep now? Samples from deep inside Katie's ears will give Danny a clear idea of just how bad the infection is and the effect on the delicate ear canals. Okay. Danny is looking for things like bacteria, yeast or mites that could be causing severe and prolonged infection. Looking under the microscope at the swab from Katie's ears and good news is there's no yeast there so we've had a win on that front but after seeing the amount of discharge that's still in Katie's ears I know I need to get that all flushed out today. Danny's now hoping the infection isn't too deep in Katie's ears. I've just got some flush, I'm just going to blindly squirt that in. Once Katie's ears are clean from the flush, it allows me to then visualise the deeper ear canal to see do we have narrowing of those canals? Are there other changes in the ear canal that are preventing us treating this infection properly? But it also allows the ear to be clean so the treatment, when we do start it, can coat the entire surface of the ear canal. So I'm not going to get too excited, but I'm pretty sure I can see that eardrum there. It doesn't look like there's really bad narrowing. So I think since that last ear flush, things must have improved. So far, one of Katie's ears is in much better shape than Danny first thought. 
She's now anxious to get a good look at the second ear to hopefully avoid any form of surgery for the lovable Staffy. So I squeeze that in and then the massage is to get it right down. So relieved. Eardrum's fine. There's certainly a lot of swelling, but I believe that is all medically manageable and somewhat reversible once we get this infection under control. So I'm really excited and hopeful that these ears are gonna be okay. All right, Katie girl, you rest up, I'll come check on you later. This has every chance of simplifying her journey from now. We still need to finish treating the infection that is present. So it's possible if we have resistant infection, we're not out of the woods. You know, maybe I shouldn't be partying too early, but I, I, I'm really hopeful. I might just turn that with a good look. At Sydney Zambi Wildlife Retreat, Rob is worried 20-year-old Pinky's contraceptive implant has gone missing, exposing her to a possible life-threatening pregnancy. Normally exotic animals, we don't desex them quite like cats and dogs. We ensure they don't breed by giving them contraceptions, just like taking the pill. Oh, there it is. It's just here. That's moved. Right in, where'd you find it? There it is, right there. Great, all good. The team is relieved to discover Pinky's old birth control device is intact. All good, no baby. An ultrasound scan confirms Pinky isn't pregnant. Let's do it. And Rob and the team get on with the job of inserting a new contraceptive pallet. Slippery little sucker. We'll put these finer ones in. I think I'll put O sutures everywhere else for her. There you go, darling. Four sutures for you to pick out. Leave the other two for me, just for a little while. All right, Pinky, you're all done for another year. Okay, anaesthetic off. It'll be a couple of hours before Pinky and Flash will be able to rejoin their fellow baboons. It will take two weeks before the danger of picking the birth control rods from their bodies is past. Baboons are very intelligent animals and yeah, if they see a, a suture there that's holding something in, they will try and work their implant out if they can feel it. So we have to be cautious. In Melbourne, there's great news for Danny's patient Katie, the happy Staffy. Her ear infections are under control. She's found a new forever home and a new name. We wanted something similar to her original name, yeah. but we just thought that Sadie suited her. Like, we went through quite we a lot of names. So we wrote down long. like 40 so names. Long. And then Sadie was the only one that stuck. Yeah, it doesn't surprise no, us no, at no, all no, that no. she was known as the happy Staffy. Good girl, Sadie, come on. Come on. She's so happy. The surprise is that it's actually like followed us here, like it's caught up with us and it's yeah. now become part of our lives, but no, she's the happiest staffy ever. Cook your jelly. Yeah, at the Lost Dogs home, they did tell us quite a bit about Sadie's ear problems, but we haven't had anything since. And they also did warn us that it might have a bit of upkeep, but Sadie's been totally fine. Her ears have been really good. Come here. Sadie loves running around she loves being and a rat bag. Sadie loves being a big buffet <laughs> with all of her toys. Shredding everything. The sprinkler. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Lee and Ryan are besotted with their special girl. <laughs> I think that the hope for Sadie is that she just stays really settled. Get into yeah. a good routine. Mm -hmm. So be a happy staffy. Happy staffy. <laughs> Your big buffet. Lively puppy Zeus is coping well with the large splint on his injured foot. His bones are healing well and Audrey is confident he'll fully recover with no long-term issues. Hi, I'm 
Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.